So welcome everyone to the second part of today's session. Um, we have Bill, uh, Sigar, Jeff, and Michael. Um, I'm going to hand it over to you guys for the Power PC Buff. All right. Thank you, everybody, and uh, happy solstice, and welcome to the Power PC Buff. Um, let's see. I am trying to figure out how to make this go to the next slide. Oh, there. I think it's over on the right. Huh? No. You can just use the arrow keys. Well, that's what you would think. Oh, there. They're down at the bottom. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I'm just not familiar with big blue button. Um, all right. So uh, we put together a few topics here that we can speak about, but uh, this is not intended to uh, be us driving the conversation. This is us uh, listening to what people want to talk about with uh, PowerPC. So uh, I did pre prepare a few things here. Uh, we do have uh, support for the new Power 10 processor in GCC 11. So if people are interested in some of those details, we can talk about it. Uh, Sager knows uh, the most about the microarchitecture. Uh, there's some new prefix instructions. Uh, uh, we now have um, eight byte instructions in addition to four byte instructions in the architecture. That's a first. Uh, we've added a PC relative addressing mode, and for that, we needed to update the ABI. Uh, there's a brand new matrix multiply assist feature in Power 10, which is pretty interesting. And uh, Peter Bergner did the compiler support in GCC, so he's available to talk about that if you'd like. Uh, we did add some ROP attack mitigation support into the architecture in Power 10, and we've got that uh, supported within GCC in GCC 11 as well. Other things that came up um, in GCC in recently that are kind of interesting. Uh, one is there's a uh, patch that one of our newer um, developers, uh, uh, Gui Hao Chen, uh, came up with um, something to eliminate mode promotion that was being done accidentally. This is one of these cases where somebody uh, with new eyes managed to uh, find something that has been plaguing us in the back end for a long time, and this was actually... For a very long time. It, it was the end of very first commit for PowerPC. Yeah, it's been there forever. And um, as a result, uh, just making this uh, basically a one line change to the back end gave us about a two and a half percent improvement in spec end, among other things. So that <laughs> was really nice to uh, to see that uh, finally get fixed. One of the things that we've seen, you know, fairly frequently there is um, inexplicable, uh, unnecessary sign extensions that would show up in the code and we could never quite trace down where they were coming from. Uh, this turned out to be the reason, something that, uh, a little macro during expand. Uh, only um, the... Yeah, so we can talk more about that if you guys like. Um, there's uh, another project that I'm personally involved with, the, the built-in function support in the back, back end uh, over the last 20 years has become somewhat <laughs> untenable, uh, completely difficult to maintain, very easy to make mistakes as you're adding new built-ins. So I've taken it on myself to try to rewrite that. And I've been plaguing Sager with way too many patches um, to try to get this fixed. But hopefully by the end of GCC 12, we will have a brand new system that's uh, that will be much easier to use. Uh, currently working on this PSABI issue that uh, Jakob identified, there is a, a problem with C++ zero length fields uh, that should not have been eliminated. The fact that they were being eliminated meant that we thought that things were homogeneous aggregates uh, that were not homogeneous aggregates, and therefore we were passing them in floating point and vector registers, and we shouldn't have been, and we're working on putting out a warning that this behavior is changing back to what the ABI says it should be, which is that we don't do that. Uh, IEEE 128, this has been going on for, Mike, how many years? I, I've lost track. I think it's five. Yeah, so this has been a really long project. And guess what? It's kind of approaching the end because all the all the patches are in. And really, it's a matter now of being able to try this out and flip a switch and uh, turn this on so that we will have uh, IEEE 128 as the default long double support instead of having the IBM double double as well, the default long double so support. That's... 
that's only for power nine and, and later because other systems do not have driver support well uh, it, right it does work if you do power eight but we would prefer people it, to yeah, do it so only power so nine and above with power eight for uh, 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 if you have vsx and power eight but i would like it to uh, to actually be used in all apis always so we can get rid of double double <laughs> that is the ultimate goal. Yeah. Double double must die. <laughs> so so some of the things on our horizon for this is go ahead. Uh, well, we we can make it die in R6000 port, right? But it will still exist in the mid, mid port. We, we cannot make it die in just or backend. Well, it's still oh, going to be used in AIX indefinitely. Yeah, as so. well. So it's not going to die in the R6000 port either. Yeah. Good point. Uh, yeah. Uh, but we won't uh, uh, we won't have to use it uh, on anything that doesn't care about compatibility to the old place. We it's, actually want to try this out in a distribution, and uh, right now I think we're going to play around in Fedora 36 as a possibility. At least we're exploring that as one place where we could turn this on for a whole distribution and, and make sure that we don't have, you know, I'm sure there'll be some fallout that we'll have to figure out what's going on. But that seems but like our first best but attempt. Only, but only for little Indian L version two. Yeah, it's yes. only little Indian. And one of the things is things like Fortran are not backwards compatible across the um, different long double types because they do not have the support in the library for both and for both long double types, unlike C and C++. So it will tend to be at a major very major thing where you're not expecting backwards compatibility. Yeah, in fourth one, they still use uh, kind equals something, where that something is the is the size of the of the floating point type, uh, 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 which is not good enough for us. Uh, uh, we should have like 16 for uh, uh, IEEE quad position probably, right? Uh, but then 15 for double double or 17, or I don't know, 42, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but some other number. Well, it's ingrained in, in the in the compiler. It's all the way back to Richard Stallman code. And just try, trying to find these hidden things is, is problematical. Yeah. But at some point, we, we uh, it will have to change in port one as well, right? We have, uh, we have uh, two separate sixteen-bit floating point types. So, well, actually, I think it's four if you count all the different implementations. Well, but, yeah, yeah, there's at least four. Yeah, but there's two that are used a lot. There's IEEE and there's the brain flow. So, so that's one topic we can go into more if people want to. Um, then, then there's also been uh, some interesting things going on with GLibc. Um, Tulio and his team are here to talk about that if folks are interested. A uh, fair amount of optimizations done uh, for P10 in particular with string and mem uh, functions and some other things. Um, there's a new system called vectored instruction that requires libc support that's kind of interesting. Um, Tulio has also been working on the side to help with the uh, microwatt uh, port, which is kind of interesting because this is something that doesn't have a vector unit. Uh, so at least to be able to run some tests, he's been removing some barriers from glibc. And we're never going to be able to uh, totally remove vector support or vector requirement from glibc for PPC 64 LE. That would be uh, a violation of the whole ABI and everything. But but uh, Tilly has at least been helping out there, and he can talk about that more if he'd like. And then I did mention this matrix multiply assist unit. And um, in addition to the compiler support, then we've been working on building that into some of the open source AI libraries. We have a team uh, that's been working in OpenBloss and Eigen, the Onyx Runtime, Bliss, a variety of places where this uh, support can be used to improve performance. And we see some really nice speed ups there. And uh, we have uh, Raji here who can can talk to that if uh, if we like so and then there could be lots of things that i haven't thought about that we could talk about so uh, that's the what else bullet so at this point i'm going to shut up and uh, let you guys uh, talk and tell me what you're interested in hearing more about or talking about
Very quick question. Um, presumably the PSABI issue affects 32-bit legacy targets as well? Um, no, it actually it doesn't. This is only for the LV2 ABI 64-bit. So what about my 64-bit ABI, which does do hom homogeneous aggregates? Okay, so yeah, you'll want to review that then and make sure that what we're doing is appropriate for you as well. Because if your if your uh, assumption is that a homogeneous aggregate does not include um, a zero length bit field stuck in between the things that are otherwise homogeneous, uh, then there will be a change in behavior going from GCC 11 to GCC 12. Yeah, I need to check my um, I need to check my argument lower encoder for that. Um, we have funky stuff for the 32-bit one where we check all the various things, but I think 64-bit is much more straightforward. Okay, yeah. yeah. There's a patch for it right now that I need to review still, uh, uh, but it actually uses uh, uh, uses a hook and the generic code, so you can use use the same. So the PR number you should look at is 102024. Two oh two four. Okay, thanks. Yeah, and uh, Jakob looked at my patch and has questions, so I have to wait until you know. Once we're done here today, I have to go and see if I've screwed something up for C. I didn't think I did, but I have to go check. <laughs> this is a, this is a primarily a change for C plus plus. By the way, it's the change of behavior is there. Yeah, it's only a C plus plus. Uh, the problem was that the uh, uh, C plus front end uh, removed the uh, zero length bit fields, so the back end didn't uh, actually get to see it. It's and it has to see it. Well, I remember some changes where we made, um, which we did make to the thirty-two bit code handling that, that when the um, the zero length or the no address off kind of option came in. I've just forgotten the C++ name for it right off the top of my head. We did make some changes for that for both 32 and 64. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say there's nothing wrong in, th in your 32-bit. Um, uh, I'm just saying that, you know, it's if, where we ran into it was with the homogeneous aggregate situation. Uh, there's always the possibility that you've got some other dependency that, that you should look at, so. Um, but Jakob's laid out fairly clearly in that PR what the change was that he made um, for GCC 12. And that's where we've been discussing what the different uh, backends need to do about their ABI issues. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yep. Uh, the, only, the only thing we do, I, I think, Bill, uh, is warn about the potential problem. And we just. Yeah. Learn because actually, you know, reinstating the the zero length bit field allows us to do the right thing, which is to not use a homogeneous aggregate. <laughs> and so previous previous versions of GCC were wrong. So now we're just going to warn on the new versions. Yeah, and, the, and no the one noticed that they were wrong either. This is a, an extreme corner case that I doubt very much in practice is, is an issue. So we still have a warning that GCC5 changed one of the behaviors of the ABI and, no, we and don't. so forth. We, we, oh, we, we, we removed, removed that recently, right? Yeah. We're removing that in GCC12. <laughs> We're finally getting rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I removed my, my hesitation about removing the warning. And I thought, you know, maybe we should wait until nobody's using 4.8 anymore. But, you know, I think maybe, <laughs> maybe we can give up on, on that. That's just waiting too long. I don't know if GCC still builds under 4.8 anymore. It does. Barely yeah. hanging on. <laughs> I still use it, so yeah. I use the oldest version of everything uh, that's that's still supported to build everything. <laughs> okay. Um, anybody out there have other uh, discussion points that you'd like to hear more about or? we should talk about? I'm curious about your MMA support. Um, let's see, what, what can I say and what should I say? 
we have something similar. Um, we're looking right now to expose it strictly as a built-in. Are you guys kind of in the same boat? Nobody's, I don't think anybody's looking at trying to generate these automatically. We're in exactly the same boat. Yeah, we only did yeah, that. Yeah, in GCC, we're in, the, we're in the same boat. Um, I will, I think, to be totally open kimono, I think there are people within IBM who are looking into the possibility of you could generate some of these things automatically in the compilers. I have some skepticism about what you can do there because the, the, the true performance benefit comes from doing the, the blocking, which mm -hmm. is a much more difficult thing for the compiler to figure out. You can, you can recognize that you're doing matrix multiplication relatively simply. Uh, can, you, can you figure out what the best blocking is for the target? Um, relatively Not simple. bloody likely. <laughs> yeah, seems, seems, seems you know, you know so, so to me, you know, I think there are people who are looking at it. I, I don't foresee GCC power backend jumping in that direction anytime soon. Us either, you know, we're trying to expose it for, for a team internally and it's strictly a built-in so they can wire it into the various libraries they want to use. So it probably looks exactly like what you guys are doing right now. And if somebody manages to figure out how to, how to solve the bigger problem, great, we all benefit, but it sounds like we're, we're roughly the same. Okay, yeah, sounds good. I think everybody's kind of spending a, a lot of time trying to figure out where to go here. I know that Intel's got their way of going and ARM's got their way of going. And, uh, I don't know, I think we're a long ways from the harmonic convergence, but I think there's a lot that we can share within within the compilers on, on the things that can be done and agree to disagree on the things that can't be done. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not even sure how many people actually roll their own matrix multiplies and, and rather just use uh, an open blast or eigen type uh, solution, which, you know, if, if, if we've gone in there already, uh, or at least Raji's team has gone in there already and added all the support, uh, then there's no real reason to have to roll your own. Right. Yeah. If you use something that's automatically generated, it will be 30% slower, something like that. So, so you really, you, you really do want to use uh, optimized and written libraries. For this. That's what our team's doing. Yeah, that's what they're doing. Uh, the built-ins, uh, uh, they don't actually use uh, registers in GCC. That's... <laughs> It's all faked out and stuff. <laughs> well, Florian okay, had his hand up. I want to make sure that Florian got his question or answer in. Oh, okay. I've, I also see some things in the chat. So let's let's go Florian to Florian. Florian was here first. So let's okay. get Florian. Thank you. I, did, I didn't see the hand up. So go ahead, Florian, please. Um, so we are looking into switching long double to binary 128 in Fedora. And one thing that has come up in internal discussions is what to do about libg Fortran. And ideally, we would like to have a so name bump at least, because the library API changes. But then the question came up, uh, do we bump so name only on PowerPC 64 le or on all targets? Is there another reason to do the so name bump? And that's sort of currently blocking or will soon block uh, Fedora experimentation in, in, in that area. It's, we ideally, ideally want to do one transition with the right zone name. It's also things like um, MPC and MPFR and GMP that have long double interfaces that you need to have a SO name bump too. Yeah. You need to bump it everywhere. At the same time, because there's only uh, only one name name for everything. Uh, for all targets. Well, maybe. <laughs> so, it just seems like insanity to have different so names that uh, across the different architectures. I'm I'm surprised that's even under consideration. No well, it's also by con switch by configuration. I mean, right now you can configure which of the three different long double formats to use. Oh man! And so, in theory, you you should have a different surname for each of the three. Long double, 
It's 64 bit long double B and IBM double, uh, double double and I, uh, long double B and IEEE 128. So, so Florian, what's the, the, the reason, why, why is it even being considered to have different cell names across the architectures? Yeah, because um, other architectures probably would don't like that. Oh, they, it's, it's just a convenience. So, yeah, yeah. okay, I, I get it. Yeah, if, if, you know, they don't have to change their cell name because their, their types are not changing. Yeah. yeah. Yikes. Oh, it's going to break backward compatibility for all of them. So, I mean, you're not going to have be able to match up the shared object. I'm glad this is not my problem. All right, I'll shut up now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I think, Florian, unfortunately, I, I, I'm not sure that, I think that's going to be on you guys to decide what you want to do. I'm not sure that we have a valid opinion. Um, yeah, but it. Do. I mean, ideally, we would like to have the G4 um, compatibility across distributions. So we have to agree on the ABI and the zone name there. And libg Fortran seems to be slightly more central than, say, GMP or MPC or um, other libraries, which also may have long double interfaces in some areas, but which aren't used in practice that much. Right, but it's, it's still a const poisoning where that's how I found it originally. If I use the shared version of MPC and, and so forth, when I was building the tool chains for the different long double formats, um, it would say, the linker would say you're mixing um, objects between the long double types. And um, even though the compiler doesn't actually call anything with long double in the library, it's it's an all or none situation. You either have it, you know, C and C++ work around this by just using the no attribute option on each of the modules that they're carefully hand built in. Exactly. Is there any other component in the ELF file format or that we can use to distinguish this or to prevent these two libraries from being uh, yeah we could intermix there's, uh, there's attributes in the in the elf uh, libraries to say uh, what the ABI is so we could use that I think the issue is not the technical implementation but um, just deciding to, yeah making uh, a decision have you guys reached out to uh, Matthias, uh, who does a lot of the, the uh, Ubuntu stuff, and obviously Richie and, and the team at SUSE. Not yet. Um, Those are probably the best places to start. Yeah, I'm sure I thought it was more like a the upstream thing, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting my fedora hat on for a minute and, and, and kind yeah. of trying to think as a distro guy. Um, yeah, we, we've got contacts at, at, at the distro level, so we, we, we ought to use them and try and figure out what's going to work best across the distros. Yeah, that's probably a fallback if DCC doesn't want to take a position on that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, all these things we'll find out when we actually start having a distro make, make the switch. You know, and you have similar things like, if you're on a distro that where the switch is default has been changed, does the automatic configuration of GCC mirror the system default, or does it you default to long double IBM or IEEE? Just when you think you're hitting the finish line, Bill, more stuff pops up. Yeah, well, I mean that's yeah, we 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 don't have any. Uh, any misconceptions that we're done. <laughs> what, we, what we're done with is what we know about, and now comes the time when we find out more things that we don't know about. Part of that. Yeah, you're ready to start wider scale testing. Right. Thinking about the integration. Really hoping that we've caught everything, though. <laughs> of course, but, of course. But getting to the question about B.16, I can't answer whether we want to do that. You're going to have the same sort of issues with B.16 um, with you know, just adding 
adding uh, surnames and things like that if you support a B416. And and as I said, there are four different variants of the 16. Yeah, exactly. Point. What is float 16? Is that the well, that's of precision format? Or? Oh, there may be more coming. Yeah. Four, yeah, four is not I enough think. to describe this problem yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, so just 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 to put my moderator hat on now, I'm gonna if we're if we're moving away from float 128, I think John John Wakeley's question was next. Uh, he has a question about the the power darn instruction and whether a standard random device uh, should be using that to get a random number. And I think that the answer is uh, yes. Uh, but as I as I said, you do have to expect darn to fail. It can fail in a few no 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 no, cases. no 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 no. It should use the built-in no matter what. Yeah, we we have a built-in yeah. we have a built-in to use the darn instruction, and that should be used. Yeah, and it actually works correctly now. The built-in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you, I don't I don't think you have uh, failure issues to to be worried about there, at this point. So Bill, I'm adding the questions to the shared notes like they did in the previous session, so you don't have oh, to okay. scroll through the chat. Next one is Joseph Myers, I think. We are done with John's question. Okay, very good. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, so yes, the next question is: Are we planning to add Float 16 support to the PS APIs in the GCC backend, such as recently has been added for x86-64, and has been present for AH64 for a long time? Power is conversion instructions between binary 16 and wider floating point formats. They're not yet direct arithmetic in binary 16. I think that's correct. Though. So that's the status of where things are. Um, I can't speak to the future of processor development around float 16. All I can point to is that we've got right now, the only place that you'll find float 16 is in the MMA uh, unit and in those conversion instructions. Other instruction to load them. Yeah, yeah to load things. them, right. It's, it's, it's a storage story. format only at, yeah. at the moment. If you're looking at scalar float 16, it's only a storage yeah. format. And um, float does not exist in any of the APIs. Right, and um, I, we don't have any plans to announce anything further in that regard here, and uh, I don't uh, have plans uh, around the ABI to add Float 16 support at this time. Yeah, I mean, if, if we did, we have the whole issue like we have with uh, IEEE 128, where you have to get glibc to, to do it, and then libc yeah. C++ and Fortran and, and so forth. And of course, we've got we've got brain float sixteen to worry about, and and all that. So, it's uh, well, that's there's a lot of interesting of, mess. Kind of easier even because it's real, it really is truncated uh, uh, single precision. So it's kind of easy to handle. Yeah, I guess the short answer, Joseph, is not today. I I don't have any plans I can share with you about that. Uh, Alexander Putapenko has written, how does call registers but, no, wiping? That's, the, that's from the previous talk. Oh, that's the previous talk. Yes, you're right. That's it for the PowerPC BOF questions that are here at the moment. Okay, my apologies. There, hmm. I'm gonna go back to the chat. The unfortunate part about switching back and forth between the shared notes and the chat is the chat takes a long time to populate. What else? Other other issues that people are interested in? Looks like Neil has another question. Yeah, Peter has a question, but we I don't see Bill anymore. If yeah, maybe just turn up his camera. So um oh, here Bill's coming back. Pe Pedro asked about uh MMA performance, and I don't know if anybody we have Raji on. Yeah, I don't know if Raji could talk to that. She's the one who her uh, her team is the one that did all our MMA support in the open libraries. Yeah, but Raji's only connected with in listen mode. So. Oh. 
Raji, is there a way you can go over to? Uh, you can switch audio? over. I mean, she so need to disconnect and reconnect, but she can type in the chat and we can. Oh yeah. She has any answer to that? Yeah. connecting back up. Hi folks, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, apparently trying to look at the chat really cratered my my window and I lost everything. So I apologize. Let's see. I I think that I saw a question earlier. Yeah, Ra Raji's coming back. She yeah. I mean, there's a question about MMA that Raji is reconnecting. Yeah. To. And she's oh, okay. Reconnecting there she is. Hi. So um, so to answer the MMA performance, so in Open Blast we have uh, internal benchmarks that are showing the performance, but then when it comes to the real world world workload. We have a ResNet 50 model that uses PyTorch and then it open glass in the back end. We have used that and it is showing uh, a very good performance compared to Power9. Uh, we have some recent publishes related to the performance numbers. Uh, I can point to that. And then to answer the next question, yes, TensorFlow also uses MME uh, using Eigen. So Eigen is completely MME enabled for float and double. And it is all integrated with TensorFlow. So whoever uses latest TensorFlow version, they can benefit. They can you get use of. Uh, they can use MME through Eigen. So it is all integrated, and and it is. We are still working on some uh, enabling low precision MME support there. There is a question from Neil. If there are no follow-ups on that. Yeah, so the question about uh, Boolean with uh, PPC tutorial, I think what you're what you're talking about there, and this is a known issue with C++ and altevec.h, and uh, it's, there's a very simple solution to it. After you've included altevec.h, you just undef bool and everything is fine. Uh, that's kind of the way that your, your applications have to be built if you're taking advantage of altevec.h and C++. Uh, you can contact me offline with specific questions if you'd like uh, about problems that you're having. But that you know, there's nothing that's changing about that. The 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 vector library altavec.h will continue to be uh, the main way that you get at the uh, the vector built-ins. Yeah, and just a conceptual problem that an artifact bool is not the same thing as a C++ bool. So Neil, if you, so. so Neil, if you're running into a problem like that and you see breakage where Altevec is not, you know, you're not opting into it, something that you're calling probably is. Some header that you're using probably is because it's that's the only way that that's going to happen is if somebody is including Altevec.h at some point and that, well, you know, there are there's also some some internals in terms of defining uh, some of the uh, some of the uh, keywords, but if you've got specific issues, uh, you should open bug reports and and we can take a look and try to help you with that. Okay, good, Neil. We'll try to connect with you and figure this out. Thanks. Yeah, John. Thank you uh, for you know, just reading back. Thank you for taking a look at the at the darn thing. If you if you run into problems, please please contact us. We'll we'll make sure that we understand what the issue is you're running into. I think that it should be working uh, as long as you're making use of uh, underscore underscore or sorry underscore built in underscore darn. Uh, that's the that's the one you should be using. Great, thanks, John. Other folks? Yes. Yes. Hi. Hiya. 
there's been a discussion on adding a new string function called memcomp eq uh, on the glibc list uh, for comparisons that don't need ordering because extracting the ex exact difference is costly uh, for especially for short inputs and the compiler often doesn't know that the ordering doesn't matter and can turn memcomp into this new a call to this new function um i don't know if you have seen that and have an opinion on that or i think it would benefit our pc as well in gcc as a built-in yeah we've already got a memcomp equality that is an internal function in gcc so i think we just have to map that if, if you guys end up adding that AB, api into, into glibc i think we just transition our internal to, to have an external implementation i think we're good but uh, the compiler will optimize uh, a normal mem comp uh, to mem equal normally already Okay, then I will tell the submitter to move forward with, with the GLIPC implementation, if that sounds reasonable to you. Yeah, I think so, unless Tulio wants to weigh in. Yeah, I still have to check check that and behind GLIPC output. Tulio uh, gets a pass. He was on vacation last week, so he's still catching up on the mailing list. So uh, give him a moment to look at it before you go. Go forward, I guess, Florian. Thanks. All right, we have nine minutes left. Uh, still time to. You can show some pretty pictures. We could show pretty pictures. I've lost the ability to. Um, could could I have the. Uh, authority back thank you there we go there's a marketer picture <laughs> yeah. that that sayer tells me this has been photoshopped but uh, that's that's the picture that people show I, for power i code. hope it is because that's <laughs> <not gonna work>. <laughs> <laughs> uh but you know here's a prettier picture yeah that one's pretty so you 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 uh, talk about what you want to talk about, Sager, and tell me which pictures to go. Well, I I think this is a very pretty picture, but I've got nothing to talk about. Right? It's just a big it, machine. Yeah, <laughs> this is the new this is the new high end machine that was that was just announced uh, last week. It's the Denali uh, uh, for you for uh, for socket guy here. So lots going on in there. Can you send me one? <laughs> <laughs> Carlos has his hand up. What's up, Carlos? Um, yeah, so I think that the, oh, that's an open question from Jeff, which is like developer boxes. Is there any conversation about that? It was a power boff. There, there, there is conversation <coughs> about that. Um, yeah. And we have people internally who are working on that. Uh, <clears throat> I will say that uh, it's not going as timely as we would like it to go. Uh, there, there will be a, a GCC, you know, box going out to OSU, for example, and, and so on. So that's that's the immediate, you know, the thing that we all want the most is to see that that box out there. And there are plans for that. It's just not going as fast as we would like it to go. There are some, you know, some of the interesting things about, um, you know, the, the we we partnered with Samsung, and and they're so good that that the chips you know are coming out with such high yields that getting cheap chips is hard <laughs> yeah <laughs> and that's and, that's actually affecting some of this a little bit and, and for and for any development boxes or boxes for the compile farm or anything it's not going to be a big box like this one mm -hmm. and just, just to clarify that that is the ibm power 10 e1080 yeah which that's you correct. may which is you know, available from your IBM sales representative. <laughs> yeah. Operators are standing by. Yeah. <laughs> please, please, please pay our salaries. 
So we got a new question from Christoph Mulder. Christoph. Uh, uh, you were mentioning single line patch in the backends that push the spec performance by more than two percent. Can we explain a bit more about it? Okay, so it's it's the promote and vote uh, macro. Uh, it it would uh, on sixty four bit machines uh, it would promote uh, uh, pretty, pretty much any parameter to sixty four bit. Uh, to be copied to a 64 bit pseudo and used as a 64 bit pseudo. Uh, but it turns out to be a lot faster if you uh, just promote it to 32 bit pseudos. Uh, everything has to be like 32 bit or 64 bit in Power PC uh, uh, in, uh, for normal operations on, on registers. Uh, but we always did 64 bit, and it turns out that 32 bit is a lot better. Is we allow 32 bit operations, Sagerson, and also just to expand on this, that you know, it's also what the ABI specifies and clarifying whether one is expanding yeah. function arguments you know, to the caller, you know, returns from functions. And so we were being a little overly aggressive with that. And so that's what this. Uh, 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 this was when copying uh, from a register uh, uh, that's used for register passing to an internal pseudo. Uh, then, then we would uh, make it 64 bit. Um, we don't anymore, and that's like more than 2%. Wow. And I see Neil saying, you know, he, he wants a uh, Raptor to offer Power 10 systems. We'd all like to have more affordable Power 10 systems. Uh, preaching to the choir, uh, we would all love to have Power 10 systems on our desk too. We don't have the control. Yeah, that's above our pay grade for making those yeah. decisions. <laughs> yes, and if anybody's from AWS is online, you know, we, we can help you contact the appropriate people in, in IBM and, and happy to, uh, to work with you to have power systems in AWS. Actually, this raises an oh. Go ahead, Carl, you had your hand up. Um, the power 10 box that going into OSU, um, given that we've got a lot of people here that could answer some questions about, you know, um, the, the compute farm for the GNU tool chain, could we get a VM on that thing to then run the containerized, uh, tri bots? Can we do that? Is that, is that, is that okay? Cause I mean, like, I would like to put on a PPC 64 LE tri bot effectively to cover, um, uh, patches coming in and make sure they build on at least. Yeah. Uh, a primary non x86 architecture. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, coverage. Uh, so, on you know. the, so on the main uh, compile farm systems, we do not really run VMs uh, because they take up uh, uh, too much time, too much resources. Well, it depends what you mean by com compile farm. Because look, we, we have a, a cluster, yeah. <laughs> the power dev cluster, okay, we definitely right. can yeah. you know, allocate another resource in, in that cluster. Now, um, I mean, Bill said that the Power 10 system is is going to OSU. I that's that's I don't know if that's a change. I didn't believe that that was you know availability through OSU is different than going to be at OSU. So I think. Oh yeah. So okay. I this is just me. You know, my ignorance about physically how these things work. Yes, it it may not be on prem. Um, yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're still how this is going to exactly work. Where the the Power 10 systems will be. Physically placed. I mean, because the Power Nine system, all the previous ones have physically been in the co-location center at OSU. So, I mean, um, if we have Power Nine today, we can try to. I could try to deploy a container. Exactly. I could try to deploy. Not. I mean, it can't just be a container, but well, it's I mean, nicer. I mean, both, it's a VM with isolation. Yeah. I mean, I know this is also a power buff. I mean, we're always at the end, but I mean, there's also yeah. the. I mean, but, but the reason I'm saying this is that also the Z systems at Marist, and we can help you create a long-term. I mean, I can help. I mean, Oli, of course, can mm. as well. You know, long-term access to a, a virtual machine at Marist for Z Tribot as well. So, I mean, both of those are completely possible. I, I mean, like, but in total transparency, the thing I want to raise here is there are operational security considerations for these machines getting totally busted because the Tribots, we're trying as hard to run code posted to a mailing list, right? And so as long as the people hosting these things are comfortable with that, then um, we have we have open code for how the container gets set up. The containers run without network connected. So, yeah. 
Yeah, I'm, af I'm afraid we're probably going to have to take further discussions of anything offline at this point, as I see we're running out of time and I don't want to uh, impinge on the. All right, so Mr. Carlos and Jeff, please, please contact me. I'm, I'm yeah, sort of what, what another yeah. hat I'm wearing is, is the main contact for both OSU and, and helping with the, the Marist uh, Linux One <laughs> Community Cloud. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, a, com a community cloud would be interesting to get uh, the containers up and running CI/CD and connect them up to Patchworks. So we get a second architecture on Tribot. Okay, I'll f I'll follow up with you, David, then, and I'll talk to DJ about it.